In this video, we're going to look at the notion of the forward difference operator and the discrete fundamental theorem of calculus. So uh, this is a really cool way to make uh, taking a sum look like taking an integral. So uh, first of all, let's see if we have a sequence a n and it's an infinite sequence, the forward difference operator of that sequence is defined as follows. So we have delta a n equals a n plus one minus a n. And this is also called the discrete derivative. So if you think about the definition of the derivative of a continuous function, so you would have like f of x plus h o minus f of x over h, and then you would take some limit. But in this case, the domain of a sequence is really just the natural numbers. So the closest you can get from two guys in the domain is one unit away from each other. So this is as close as you can get to the notion of the derivative of a sequence. So let's look at some examples of this. So let's first look at a pretty simple example, n squared. So this would be like the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be n plus 1 squared minus n squared. And so that's pretty easy to see that you get n, n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus n squared. So you get 2n plus 1. So notice we've got something that almost looks like the power rule here. So uh, the squared came down to multiply n to the first power, but then we got a plus 1. So you might ask the question is, is there something that we can do to the sequence so that we have something that looks more like the perfect version of the power rule? And there is. And so that's to define the following. So let's define n and then uh, to the power of 2 with this underline to be the following. This is called the following power. So it's n times n minus 1. So you can guess what we would have if we had a kth power up here and we're actually going to do that as an example. So notice in this case we get the forward difference operator of n to this uh, second power, the second falling power. So that's going to be equal to this with n plus 1 plugged in. So that's going to give us n plus 1 times n minus this term just by itself. So that's n times n minus 1, but now we can factor out an n, and notice we're left with n plus 1 minus n minus 1, so we get 2n, but notice that's 2n the first falling power. So we have a, something like a power rule for these falling powers. In fact, we could have the following proposition. So if n the kth falling power, so we, what we want this to be is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, but we want k total terms here, and so we can do that by n minus k plus 1. So now we have k total terms here. Then the forward differ difference operator of n, this falling kth power, is exactly equal to k and then the k minus first uh, falling power. Okay, so actually this is like pretty easy to see. If you look at the following, so let's do this falling power. Good, so that means we're going to replace everything in here with n plus 1. So that's going to give us n plus 1 uh, times n times n minus 1. And notice down here we're going to finish at n um, minus k plus 2. Good. And then notice we're going to subtract this thing just as is. So that's n, n minus 1, all the way down to n minus k plus 1. Great. So now let's look at the greatest common factor that we can take out. And in fact, we can take out the greatest common factor um, n down to n minus k plus 2. Great. So let's see what that gives us. So here we're going to have n times n minus 1 all the way down to n minus k plus 2. And now we're going to have n plus 1 minus, and so let's see what we have left over. So we have n minus k plus 1, n minus k plus 1. But notice this term right here is exactly k. And then we have our uh, common factor that we pulled out, which is actually just the k minus first falling power. So we have the result. So we have k and then the k minus first falling power.
Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we're going to look at another application of this. So now let's look at the forward difference operator in some sort of exponential sequence. So in other words, we want to look at a delta of r to the n. So this would uh, be part of some geometric series, which might be helpful. So now notice this is going to be r to the n plus 1 minus r to the n. But now we can factor out an r to the n, and we're left with r minus 1 times r to the n. Okay, good. So let's look at some uh, nice sub-examples of this. So if we do the forward difference operator of 2 to the n, we get 2 to the n plus 1 minus 2 to the n, but that's exactly 2 minus 1 times 2 to the n. In other words, 2 to the n. And so this is why sometimes called, this is why sometimes 2 is called the discrete E. In other words, the discrete, like, natural base. Now let's look at another one. So if we do one-third to the n, so again, just using that uh, formula which we derived, we have one-third minus one times one-third to the n. So this is minus two-thirds to the n. Okay, great. So now let's look at one more. Let's look at Fibonacci numbers. So let's recall Fibonacci numbers are defined as follows. So we have F0 is 0, F1 is 1, and then F of n, or F sub n, is F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 2, where n is bigger than or equal to 2. And so now if we take the forward difference operator of a Fibonacci number, we're going to get F n plus 1 minus fn. But now notice this recursion re-indexed just a little bit will give us that this is fn minus 1. Okay, great. So uh, I'll clean up the board and then we're going to look at one more thing, the notion of a discrete antiderivative. Okay, so now we can have the notion of the discrete antiderivative. So we say the sequence capital A n is a discrete antiderivative of the sequence little a n if the forward difference operator applied to capital A n is little a n. So now we can just rewrite our examples uh, that we've seen already in terms of this uh, discrete antiderivative. Okay, so maybe we could write something like this for the discrete antiderivative. So inverse of a n equals capital A n if delta a n equals a n. So we can use this uh, forward difference operator inverse. So let's see, we have, so we have the discrete antiderivative of the sequence n k will be 1 over k plus 1 in falling power k plus 1. And so that just follows from uh, something we did on the last board. Okay, so now this discrete antiderivative of uh, r to the n will be given by r to the n, but now it'll be over r minus 1, just like we saw for the forward difference operator. So, for example, the discrete antiderivative of 1 third to the n, so that's going to be 1 third to the n over um, 1 third minus 1, so that's going to be negative 2 thirds. So we can write this as minus 3 halves times 1 third to the n. Okay, good. And then finally, one more. This discrete antiderivative of the Fibonacci numbers just pushes it up 1 to fn plus 1. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at a really great result involving the discrete antiderivative and the discrete derivative. Okay, now we're going to tie it all together and look at this thing called the fundamental theorem of discrete calculus. So if the forward difference operator of capital A n is little a n, in other words, the discrete antiderivative of little a n is big a n, then the sum from n equals 1 to m of a n is this capital A m plus 1 minus a 1. And now notice we could put this into this formula. Uh, so the antiderivative of little a n evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. So this makes taking finite sums look a lot like taking um, definite integrals, which is really nice. The proof of this is super simple. So notice we can take this sum n equals 1 to m of a n. But then since we know a n is equal to the forward difference operator of a uh, capital A n, this is the same thing as n equals 1 to m of a 
n plus 1 minus a n. Remember, that's the definition of the forward difference operator. But now, notice that this is just equal to a2 minus a1 plus a3 minus a2 plus dot 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 plus, and then the last bit is a m plus 1 minus a m. Okay, but notice this is a telescoping series and everything cancels except for AM minus 1 and A1 and that gives us AM minus, sorry, plus 1 minus A1, which is the solution that we wanted. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and we're going to look at three quick examples of this. Now we're going to look at three very familiar finite sums, but we're going to look at it in the setting of the discrete fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's do this one first. So we have the sum n equals 1 to m of n. So this is like a triangular number. You probably even know what this sum is, but it's nice to see it in this new setting. So notice this is the same thing as the falling power with a first power. So that means we can write this as the inverse... Uh, difference operator, in other words, the discrete antiderivative of this falling power evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. Great. But then recall from the power rule, this is going to give us 1 half and then this second falling power evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. Okay, good. And now this is finally 1 half and then we have n times n plus 1 evaluated um, from n equals 1 to m plus 1. And now it's just a bit of algebra to show that this is 1 half m times m plus 1. Okay, great. So let's move on to this next one. So Rn, so notice this is going to be the discrete antiderivative of Rn evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. This is r to the n over um, r minus 1 evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. And now, again, just a bit of algebra will show that this is equal to um, 1 minus r to the m plus 1 over 1 minus r. Now, finally, for the Fibonacci numbers, so this is the discrete antiderivative of the Fibonacci numbers evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. But then the discrete antiderivative just pushed it up 1. So this is f sub n plus 1 evaluated from 1 to m plus 1. But that's f sub m plus 2. And now uh, we plug in 1 and we get f sub 2, which is also 1. So we get minus 1. Okay, good. So that's the end of the video.